Joking about Starliner being a joke is no longer funny, as its delays and losses are now too big. NASA's lack of confidence in Boeing, scheduling conflicts, and ongoing technical issues have led to further delays with the CST-100 Starliner project. And first operational Boeing Starliner missions will be in 2024. At that point, the fate of the ISS, well, is even more worrisome. It's been over a decade for this spacecraft contract, so should Boeing Starliner be stopped or scrapped? Let's discuss everything about it in today's episode of Alpha Tech. NASA has delayed the first flight of Boeing CST-100 Starliner commercial crew vehicle with astronauts on board until April 2023, a slip that will push back the spacecraft's first operational mission into 2024. That's due to NASA's Aerospace Safety Advisory Panel members raising doubts about the readiness of the vehicle for both CFT and later operational missions. In fact, the Orbital Flight Test OFT-2 uncrewed test flight of Starliner in May produced a number of in-flight anomalies, and those need to be resolved before CFT, as well as additional testing of the latest version of its flight software. The delay in CFT will affect the schedule of later operational missions when CFT was scheduled for launch in February, NASA had tentatively planned to follow that with the first operational Starliner mission called Starliner 1 in the fall of 2023. Once Starliner is certified, NASA plans to alternate between Starliner and Crew Dragon missions. However, NASA said it has moved up SpaceX's Crew 7 mission, previously planned for spring of 2024 to fall of 2023 indicating that the agency no longer believes Starliner can be certified in time for an operational mission in the fall of 23. Notably, Boeing announced October 26, as part of its quarterly financial results, it would take an additional $195 million charge against earnings for Starliner delay, bringing the total losses recorded by the company to $883 million. It warned in a regulatory filing that we may record additional losses in future periods. After all, NASA, Boeing, and certainly American taxpayers will find the Starliner terrible. However, having Starliner would not only make it easier for astronauts to visit ISS more often, but it could also drive down the cost of traveling to space. NASA's been working for years on a plan to avoid a space monopoly. And after the space agency retired the space shuttle program in 2011, the U.S. government had no way of traveling to the ISS and was entirely dependent on Russia for trips to outer space, which was not only expensive but risky from a geopolitical standpoint. To solve the problem, NASA changed its approach and turns to the private sector to make replacements. In 2014, the space agency announced it had hired Boeing and SpaceX to develop their own space capsules, which would ideally be ready to transport astronauts within three years. The agency made a deliberate choice to invest in two very different types of companies. Boeing, a longtime aerospace contractor and partner for NASA projects, including the ISS and the Apollo Moon mission, and SpaceX, a budding space startup and a new NASA partner, one that represented the future of the commercial space industry. Neither company had a vehicle ready by 2017 and both faced issues with their landing parachutes and launch abort systems. SpaceX ended up successfully transporting human astronauts to the ISS with the Crew Dragon spacecraft in 2020, while Boeing continued to struggle with Starliner's design. During the vehicle's first test flight in 2019, Boeing uncovered a major software bug that could have led to a massive failure in space, as well as an issue with the capsule's internal clock, which forced officials to cut the test short and cancel the plans to dock the capsule at the ISS. Boeing was forced to delay a second test last October after the company found a problem in Starliner's propulsion system just hours before it was set to launch. Despite all these issues, even though it already has a functional vehicle in SpaceX's Crew Dragon, NASA remains eager for Starliner to succeed with a manned mission to the ISS. If you only have one, you get locked into that situation where you might end up paying a lot of money because there's no one else competing for the business and it gets enormously expensive, explains Christina Chaplin, a space analyst who previously reviewed space programs for the Government Accountability Office. It's important to keep costs low, and having that kind of competition is how you do it. This is part of a conscious effort by NASA. The agency has taken on the responsibility of fostering competition in the space industry, 
usually by bringing on multiple companies to compete for the same lucrative contracts. This approach has already made its efforts to explore even deeper into space more cost-effective. In the near term, that includes work on Artemis, NASA's mission to return to the moon. And looking ahead, the agency's using the strategy as it begins the process of replacing the ISS, which is expected to happen around 2030. NASA has awarded preliminary funding to at least four different space station concepts, including proposals from Northrop Grumman, which has been an aerospace and military contractor for decades, and Jeff Bezos' space startup, Blue Origin. The commercial space race may seem like a far-flung worry for people on Earth, but it's not. Competition in the space launch business is having a real impact on satellite-based services like GPS, weather tracking, and space-based internet services like SpaceX's Starlink and Amazon's Project Cooper. As far as companies that can launch these satellites have emerged, all of these technologies have become more accessible. Since the space shuttle program shut down, for example, the price of sending a pound of payload into orbit has decreased by an order of magnitude, and the cost could get even lower as more startups begin launching satellites. In addition to known companies like SpaceX and longtime French launch provider Arian Space, there's also a growing number of startups that are or will soon be capable of sending satellites into space. That includes Rocket Lab, Virgin Orbit, and Blue Origin. It has a deep impact on all data transmission, voice transmission, global positioning, says William Kovacic, a George Washington University law professor who's written about competition in the space industry. If competition in that system falters, if we don't have continuing innovation and improvements in performance, if launch vehicle providers can't put satellites in the right place, it has a major ripple effect through the entire economy. The nightmare scenario of a space monopoly isn't too different from the fear of a monopoly here on Earth. If just one company gains too much control over the space market and gets too far ahead with their tech, it's possible that future competitors could be blocked out of space for good that means a single company, like SpaceX, could end up with an enormous amount of influence over how humans visit and utilize resources in space. The stakes here are almost unimaginable. Space companies aren't just shaping how humans will explore the moon and other planets like Mars, but they're also shaping technologies that we use every day, whether that's internet service or products that haven't even been invented yet. If history is any indication, monopolies are often bad. So it's not ideal to start humanity's venture off-planet dependent on one company. So keeping Starliner is at least another step forward for making sure that's not what happens. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. And don't forget, share your ideas in the comment section. Everyone's support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much. And we hope to see you next time.